also in this video I'm going to talk about the atomic emission and absorption spectra that's part of the advanced higher chemistry course. So in higher and national five chemistry you would have learned um, about the structure of the atom and that the electrons are in energy levels and they each uh, element has its own electron arrangement and so on and so forth. So now what we're going to look at is actually these electrons moving energy levels. So that can happen when an atom absorbs energy usually in the form of light. So in its lowest energy state, so in normally, an atom would be in what we call its ground state. So that's the lowest energy state that's the most stable, most energetically favourable. But if the atom absorbs light, um, then what can happen is that electrons become excited um, and they get promoted to higher energy levels. So the uh, diagram here shows the atom in its ground state. So this is essentially a hydrogen atom. So the electrons in the first energy level, but then the atom absorbs a photon and the electron becomes excited and gets promoted to the second energy level. Okay. So once an electron has been promoted, because this excited state is actually energetically unfavourable, eventually the electron will fall back down to the ground state again, the lower energy levels. Now, the time it takes for them to fall back down is sometimes variable, sometimes they fall down immediately, sometimes it's a slightly delayed response. Um, however, they will fall back down because it's not energetically favourable for them to stay in the excited state. When they do fall back down, the atom emits energy and usually that energy is emitted in the form of light because as we know energy can't be created or destroyed so if the electrons fall into a lower energy state then the energy it had to become excited must go somewhere. Okay. So if we look at hydrogen, now this diagram up the uh, top here uh, is the hydrogen I've drawn in five energy levels and here's the one electron. So this electron could be promoted to the second energy level, it could be promoted to the, fir eh, the third energy level, the fourth or the fifth, and where it gets excited to depends on how much energy is actually absorbed. So sometimes the transitions, electron transitions and promotions, are shown as these energy level diagrams with the lines down the bottom here. So this shows you the hydrogen as a, in its ground state, so that its one electron is in the first energy level. If the atom was to absorb enough energy, the energy that was equal to what's being referred to as E1 here, then it can be promoted to the second energy level. If there wasn't enough, so let's just say E1 had a value of say a thousand kilojoules per mole, say the atom only absorbed 500 kilojoules per mole, then it wouldn't go into an excited state because not enough energy has actually been absorbed in order to promote the electron. Okay, so the amount of energy that's absorbed will affect what tra electron transitions are possible because if there's not enough energy then it won't be able to, the electrons won't be able to be promoted. So these are the possible transitions that are, could happen for a hydrogen atom in order to put the electrons in an excited state and in order to put the electron from the first energy level to the fifth you're going to need much more energy than you did to get it from the first to the second. Okay, so the bigger the promotion the more energy is that, uh, that's required. You will notice as well that as in these energy diagrams that as the energy levels increase the gaps between the energy levels get smaller so the energy gaps smaller which means that a promotion um, or the difference in energy between electron shell 4 and electron shell 5 isn't as much as the difference between electron shell 2 and electron shell 3. So the difference in the amount of energy that's needed between to go between the different energy levels decreases as you get higher um, up the energy levels. If an atom was to absorb a very, very high amount of energy, then what can happen is that the electron is just emitted altogether, and that is what happens when an atom is ionized. 
So you might remember ionisation energy is from higher. Okay, so if there's if an atom of this has absorbed the energy that's equal to its first ionisation energy, then um, the electron would just be completely emitted. So all the these electron transitions are taking place, but once an electron is promoted, it won't stay in that state, as we've said already, because it's energetically unfavorable, so it will fall back down. However, it doesn't always fall back to the ground state, so it's the lowest energy state. Sometimes it happens in stages. So it might fall from energy level 5 to energy level 3 first, and then it might go from 3 to 2, and then it might go from 2 to 1 back to the ground state for a hydrogen atom. Okay. The energy level it falls back to, there's a different series, so if it's falling back to the energy level 1, then that's referred to as being part of a transition in the Lyman series. If it was to fall back down to energy level 2, then it would be a transition that's within the Balmer series, and then for energy level 3, it would be within the Passion series, and then for energy level 4, it would be in the Bracket series. So you'll probably hear these series being referred to, but the difference between them is just what energy level the electrons are actually falling back to. Now, like I said already, when the electrons fall back down to the lower energy levels, they do emit energy, and depending on the transition that happens, so the energy level they fall back to, a different amount of energy will be released. So, if we were to look at this diagram, from going from N two to N1 releases less energy than going to, from N3 to N1. Okay, so this is important to be in mind when we now look at how we can then use this to our advantage. So we've already looked at the electromagnetic spectrum and because the different electron um, transitions will emit different energies of light, that means it's different wavelengths of light that are being emitted and we can actually use these to help us identify different elements and compounds. Now you would have seen this plenty of times before in science at school when you pass white light through a prism and you get the continuous visible spectrum. Okay, so this, if you were to pass light or a light was coming from a substance, you don't actually get the full spectrum. What you get it's what we call an emission spectrum. So, this is the emission spectrum for hydrogen, and it's in for, for the Barmler series, so this is all the transitions that are falling back initially to N equals 2. And basically what happens is, for each different transition that has occurred, so each excited electron falling back down to N equals 2, there's a different energy of light emitted, which means there's a different wavelength of light emitted. And these wavelengths that are shown here are all within the visible spectrum, so we can actually see them. So if you pass uh, electricity through a hydrogen bulb, so just a bulb filled with hydrogen, this is what you would get passing that light through a prism. So if we go back here, when you pass pure white light through a prism, you get the whole spectrum. If you were to just pass light coming from a hydrogen, all through, the spec uh, through a prism, these would be the only colours you would see, the spectrum you would see. Okay. Now this spectrum, emission spectrum, this is showing you the wavelengths or energies of light that are emitted from the electrons, the excited electrons falling back to lower energy levels. <laughs> now, if uh, this emission spectrum here is from helium. So at the top here this is continuous spectrum so that's what you see when you pass white light through the prism. But if we were to pass light from helium through a prism we would just see red, yellow, the two green lines, a light blue line and then the indigo lines. Okay. The absorption spectrum is, so with the emission spectrum being related to the light that's been emitted when the electrons fall back down, the absorption spectrum is just the opposite. It's the wavelengths of light that are absorbed um, by the electron or by the atom. So if you were to put the emission and absorption spectrums of helium together, you will notice 
you get end up with a continuous spectrum. So sometimes the emission spectrum is used to absorb uh, to identify a substance, but sometimes we will use the absorption spectrum instead. So if we look at the noble gases, it, the noble gases are often used in neon lights. Um, but you will notice from this picture that each of the noble gases emits a different colour of light. So the lights that are made out of those are all, all have different colours, which is appealing to the eye. However, the reason for this is because they are all emitting different wavelengths of visible light in their emission spectras. So if you look over at the right here, these are the emission spectrums for helium, neon and argon at the top. And what we see when we look at the colour of the light is all those bands of visible light, or all those wavelengths of visible light merging together. And because they've all got different wavelengths being emitted, or a spectrum of different wavelengths being emitted, they all have slightly different colours. <laughs> okay, and again, the different wavelengths that are emitted are dependent on what different tra electron transitions are taking place when the atoms go from the excited state back to their ground state. So this is useful because every single element has its own um, emission spectra that's different to every other one, so it's like its own fingerprint. The reason for this is because they all have different electron configurations or electron arrangements. So there's always different <coughs> electron transitions taking place, which means there's different wavelengths of light being emitted, so we end up with a different emission spectra. So these are used quite frequently to identify unknown substances, and we'll do, I'll do a video on uh, atomic spectra and uh, spectrum, spectroscopy uh, later on from this. But basically, the main thing to take away from this is that the different elements have different uh, emission spectra and absorption spectra due to different electron transitions taking place when the atoms go from a ground state where they, they're in their lowest energy state to an excited state and then when they fall back down, the electrons fall back down from their promoted state, the energy is emitted again and that creates this emission spectra. Okay. And when you put the absorption and emission spectras together for a substance, you would end up with a continuous spectrum. So the emission spectra and the absorption spectra, like I've said already, are just opposites or negatives of each other.